so I think we want to open up to some Q&A from the audience. If anybody had anything they want to ask. Yes? Charles, what science fiction did you read? Um, in you, in preparation or in sort of oh, in writing this? In, no, in general. In general. Uh, I read um, Isaac Asimov's Foundation series. Uh, I, I, mean, I guess I shouldn't try to list everything now, but uh, <laughs> I, I started that as if I were going to, huh? So um, I read um, a lot of Asimov, um, and I've read a lot of science, um, pop science, I guess, but um, and things um, that are for lay people, but I think as Kathleen was saying earlier, there's so many books now that you can almost feel like not a scientist maybe, but what it's like to be a scientist who gets to you know think about these things, and so I think the nonfiction science reading is as influential for me anyway as, as the science fiction. Yes. Actually, follow-up question: Was there any particular science fiction writer that had any influence that you are aware of on your prose style? Um, not that I'm aware of, probably because I don't know well enough. Like you know, I'll admit I'm not well read enough to know. Um, I, I think in terms of Pro style in general, I, um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure. I, I, I think I, I, I try to emulate certain people sometimes, but not emulate, I guess, but they're, they're people's voices that I really enjoy, but um, um, sometimes too much. <laughs> it comes out sounding just like them. Yes? Um, talk about Ursula Le Guin, and her uh, The Ones Who Walk Away from OMLS, the, the Sort of a, sort of, it's a story about the price of utopia. I mean, it's very hard to classify as whether it's utopia or dystopia, but I was wondering if that's sort of a third genre. And I would also put Sherry Tucker's The Gate to Women's Country in that category. You know, it's a, what what do you pay as, as a person to create a perfect world? Can you guys speak to that? Does it make sense to you or are you ready to be? Yeah, I, I mean, I think that is a, a Certainly a subgenre, if not a third genre, because there's a lot of works I can think of that fall into that. I actually, we were talking about the time machine earlier, and I think the time machine is sort of like that. Especially, it seems seems at first utopian, and then you realize that like what's happening is actually sort of creepy and awful, and the Morlocks are farming the Eloi, and you know it's gross. Um, they have to live in some way. Um, and um, you know, I think um, even. Even you could argue almost that like The Handmaid's Tale, which is like a classic yeah. dystopia, is also about the price because it's like for some people, like you know, they get to have babies. Um, you know, those those people have decided the price they're willing to pay to reproduce is to like enslave large sectors of society. Um, so in a way, a lot of these dystopias are about like weird trade-offs that people have made. I mean, um, this might come out sounding a little convoluted, but. Do you think it's possible to have a dystopia without first realizing or first um, striving to attain a utopia? Because for me, it seems like almost that every a dystopian wouldn't um, wouldn't have the same weighty, consequential, depressing, you know, pessimistic urge if you hadn't been contrasting it with you know the nostalgia for a past time or the personal crushing realization that what you aspire to is a complete like sham. I mean, do you guys, did you guys notice while writing, I suppose, the urge to create a utopia and the sense of failure that prevails in dystopian themes? Oh, I, th I think they're just two sides of the coin. You can't have one without the other. So, um, you know, whenever I've been writing in Queen City Jazz, I had a seeming utopia in my Shaker uh, community, but it wasn't, and the larger world impinged upon it. And uh, Ursula Le Guin in The Dispossessed did that with two planets. One is the utopia and one is the dystopia, but each one's... Um, <laughs> Probably yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, well, I think that the people living on each planet think that theirs is the best system. So, you know, it's just it's just this major work in which she she points out the the flaws of that that kind of, of thinking that it's just it's just not possible. I think also that um, villains in dystopian and utopian lit tend to think that they're creating a utopia. This also happens a lot in superhero movies. Um, 
and I stole this trope mercilessly, um, and my villain, um, whose name is Tyson in my book, is like really obsessed with, his utopia would, would be like now, except like a really perfect version of now where we're all like playing baseball all the time and like eating delicious fruit and having cookouts. Um, and it's in his, his, his attempt to create this sort of like perfect utopian kind of like permanent childhood that everything really gets even worse. A little bit more to say about that. That's, that's always, there's always a mad scientist. Okay, so, you know, and, and it's their idea of what would be perfect, which is, it's a top, usually kind of a top-down thing rather than a bottom-up thing. Yeah. I mean, it happened, for me, it happens different every time. It hasn't happened that many times, I guess. So, a small sample size, but I think it's um, almost always for me so far. It's it's about like actual language, not not even like so that could mean voice or tone. Um, it's like a little tiny bit of language will excite me and have some energy in it that a lot of other stuff doesn't. You know, produce lots of drafts of things that um, may be exciting for an hour or a day and eventually just you look at it and it, it just kind of disintegrates there. Certain like clumps of words just it's got something there like you hit on it and um, that that trying to sustain that energy and follow that is this is, sounds more mystical than it is but it, it's it's just it's from I don't know why. So that's the only you know I I'm, I can't think through character or plot. I think I just go to sort of how that works for me. I guess. I, w I would have to agree. I, I it does sound mystical, and I I firmly believe that the part of me that writes is more the subconscious part. So no matter how hard I might try to plan, which is not too much, but I also, I always know what I always know certain aspects of my story, but. But there are certain aspects that I do not know, so it, it just you know each of my novels and stories has has been different. Queen City Jazz just started out as, as a short work, and then it just got longer until I realized that it that it was a novel, and I knew how it, I knew the image of how it would end of this young woman standing on a bridge. I didn't know how she got there. Yeah. I just to answer really quickly, for me it always starts with a story. Um, just, you know, often the story changes a lot, but usually there's a sort of seed story that I tell myself. And so with this, the seed story was just about a woman searching in in hospitable landscape. And it changed a lot over time, but the kind of core was stayed there. And we have time for one more question. Sure. It's my sense that when mainstream writers write science fiction, they tend not really to understand most of the tropes. And of the writers, writers I'm thinking of, there are two notable exceptions, probably because both of them were immersed in science fiction at, uh, when, they, when they were very young. And I'm thinking of Rick Moody and Jonathan Lethal. And it'll be interested in hearing your comments. Um, I love those writers. Um, and I love uh, as she crawled across the table. Um, I guess I'm, I'm actually, if I'm allowed to ask you a question, I'm curious what you mean by, uh, by science fiction tropes. Well, anything from time travel to creating uh, well-visualized dystopian worlds that are fully rooted in science to uh, a sense of understanding of space opera. And I say this because I think Margaret Atwood has only succeeded in the handmaids. I've not been impressed with her arts and trade, and I'm not really the latest one. So. I think what you're playing against when you when you do that and you haven't read a lot of science fiction is that you're often reinventing the wheel. So so the people who are reading your book that have read a lot of science fiction, even though they might not consciously think that, um, it, it it's like somebody else did this better and more elegantly. I, I think that that's what happens some of the times. 
but, but, but not often. Sometimes it works. Should I go ahead? <laughs> okay. I, I do also like Moody and then uh, I, I think as somebody who uh, I would uh, you know, I would say I don't have a great understanding of science fiction tropes, and I wrote a novel with the word science fiction in the title. <laughs> it's, it, there are, you know, there are people out there waiting to pounce. <laughs> you know, they have pounced, and that's okay. I mean, I, 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 it's all part of my learning, and also, I think there's a, there is a, a feeling that there's a proprietary, like, sense, right? And, what are you doing here? So get out of here! Why are you? Why do you think you can co-opt these tropes? Why are you? What, you know, do you think you know better? And it's—I I mean, I can speak sort of personally. It's not at all what I was thinking. I was thinking as a fan, you know, maybe not the most ardent fan, maybe not, um, certainly not going to win any contests for, for SF fandom. But um, as as an enjoyer of it, I, I don't see why I, you know, wouldn't be allowed to um, to create something even you know even if even if it's um even if it's wrong by some kind of standard so i i, I it's um I, I i didn't i don't know if that was exactly where the question went but i i, I think that's sort of in, and i think in, you know writers i've enjoyed too i i don't look at whether or not they they sort of their deep understanding of the trope so much as did they move me? You know, so that's that's all I was trying to do, and I don't, you know, I, I think that's I hope I hope that's what the writers that like Lee and Moody were trying to do too, and I think they probably were, but I don't know. All right, great, thank you, everybody. Um,